Hello everyone today and thank you so much for joining us for the first of our two HFHQI support sessions. As mentioned, my name is Lucy and I'm the Development Officer on the Hospice Family Hospitals Programme and I'm joined today with Alice Anderson who is Programme Manager on the HFH Programme. We also are delighted to have both Brosheen and Eileen from HSC QPS team. Now the HFHQI awards are delivered in partnership and we are delighted that is the case because they bring so much wealth of knowledge and expertise to the QI Awards, which is what we definitely need. Um, and then finally, we've also got End of Life Care Coordinator Lisa White from NACE Hospital. And we are so pleased she's agreed to be presenting on their 2023 QI Award project, the Easy Read uh, Booklet. So something that we do at the point of registration for the QI awards and for these support sessions is we capture any questions or queries or any specific topics you might want to discuss. Um, one of the items that emerged through the registration link was that people were particularly interested in seeing some previous QI awardees. So we've just got on the first slide here some um, of the fabulous projects that we've supported through the Quality Improvement Awards. Um, we've also are aiming to keep a portfolio of all previous QI awardees. We've got all of the awards from 2023 on our website, and I can show you that at the end of the support session for anyone who doesn't know where to find those. And likewise, we will be providing a follow-up email with resources and our contact details should you wish to uh, reach out to us um, on a one-to-one -one basis. So let me just... Okay, thank you. So a brief overview for the this afternoon's session. I will just give you a quick overview and update on the HFHQI awards. I'll then be passing over to Rasheen and Eileen who are going to be giving the QI expertise and talking about stakeholder engagement and meaningful participation. And then we will pass over to Lisa White who will be presenting on the end of life care, how you may feel when someone dies booklet for adults with intellectual development disabilities. And then we'll hopefully conclude at 2.50 with some questions and answers, finishing ideally around 3, 3.05. Um, so firstly, for anyone who doesn't know, the HFHQI Awards allow us to recognise quality improvement projects that will improve end-of-life care for patients, their families, staff and the hospital. Um, we've got all of this information saved online and accessible in addition to the application guidance document. So I highly recommend anyone who's new to the QI Awards to jump online, have a little look, get a flavor of what the QI Awards are all about. Um, but ultimately what we wanted to do this year and following the success of last year is we reviewed the QI Awards and we identified a number of changes that we wanted to make for this year um, in order to improve the QI Awards as much as we can do and applying a QI approach to the QI Awards. Um, as such, we've decided to theme the QI Awards this year. And we're specifically asking for quality improvement projects which are innovative. And by innov innovative or innovation, we mean new and unique to the QI Awards. So something we haven't previously seen or potentially even a different way of approaching a problem. Um, and then the second criteria that we're looking to introduce or a general theme that is um, in for 2024 is integration. And by integration, we're looking at quality improvement projects that could be either working across different health and care service providers between hospitals, wards or settings. And whilst we are setting these as criteria for the QI awards, we really want to encourage applicants to this year to think about and approach their QI initiative or potentially a, a problem um, in a different way. So rather than seeing what's been previously done and trying to replicate it in your hospital, we're asking awardees to really consider how they could look at this issue or problem that they're hoping to improve. Um, I guess one of the benefits that we want to highlight is that through the HFHQI awards, you could potentially take risks or try things you wouldn't normally do because there is 
funding available. You've also got the support of ourselves and the HFH team. Um, and we're thankful for any advice we get from the HSE QPS team. Um, so really take risks, try something that you wouldn't ordinarily do. Um, and we also anticipate that sometimes to get a project off the ground, it can mean increased funding. So we have looked at increasing funding available from 1,000 euro, which has previously been the maximum capacity to 3,000 euro. And again, we think it's really important just to highlight this funding is available to kickstart your project, to get a project off the ground and to maybe look at implementation, but really hopefully giving QI applicants the tools and resources to consider the longevity and sustainability of their project long term. And then finally, we've introduced a requirement where we ask all QI awardees to evaluate their QI projects. So we're constantly wanting to understand the impact quality improvement projects have, specifically those that we can support through the QI awards to show the rationale and the justification around continuing to support quality improvement initiatives year on year. Um, one way we can do this, and it's partially the reason why we've chosen to theme the awards this year, is it feeds into the monitoring and measuring element of the QI awards. But we are asking that all QI awardees provide a reflective piece. And that reflective piece can be very flexible. It can be in a format that works best for you as the lead applicant. And we're just asking that they're submitted no later than 12 months after receiving the award. And another question that was uh, coming up through the registration questions and queries was people wanting to know what previous projects and what type of projects have we seen through the QI awards. So this slide is just to illustrate some of the emerging themes uh, which we've identified through our analysis and review of the QI awards over the past five years. So I just wanted to highlight, we've received um, a number of leaflets and booklets whether that's paediatric, maternity and perinatal loss or acute, we see a number of booklets and leaflets um, applied for through the QI awards and a number that have been completed and now available. <laughs> We've also seen a number of memory boxes. And again, that's both across the paediatric, the maternity and the acute setting. Um, interestingly, last year we saw two QI award initiatives that um, specifically focused on tea sets and the ceremonial ritual of giving tea and how that can bring comfort to the relatives of a patient who is dying or has died. Um, we've also seen remembrance books, comfort care packs, books, libraries, end of life trolleys and blankets just to give a taste of some of the emerging themes. And just over to your right is some of the completed projects that we've supported over the years through the QI awards. Um, so that is just my sweet and short presentation. Um, as I mentioned, there's time for questions and answers at the end of this session at around 2.50, but I will just pass over to Rasheen and Eileen in HSE QPS team.